Hi, this is Art Eddie from Art of Fatherhood. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us, guys. Big fan. I saw the first four episodes. Love the vibes you guys are putting together as, uh, you know, brothers and all that. Talk about how you both prepared for this role. And did you guys kind of work together about, you know, having that brother dynamic? Tony, you can go first and get you can follow up, man. Sure. Yeah. You know, um, as as an older brother myself to a um, younger brother in general and in real life, um, I think, you know, that's kind of the the vibe you 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 said, you know, uh, great directions from Chris, Dan and Benji. Um, very, very unfortunately, I did not get to work in the actual room with Gaten and nor <laughs> had any time to plan this. But I I like to think that um, we are talented enough that we convinced the world that we were in the same <laughs> room. Uh, um, mostly him. He did the heavy lifting. But uh, yeah, you know, I just kind of went in there and and um, you, at least in animation, in my um, uh, experience, you kind of trust the team who is building the macro view of it all. Mm -hmm. uh, and you go from there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think it was definitely a lot of that, like that dynamic building was on the shoulders of the creatives. Like Chris Dan and Benji really did help both of us out. And because we both live separate coasts and uh, we actually didn't really get to interact. This is our, actually our first time getting to talk in context of this project together yeah. with, is with you guys. So this is really, really fun. So uh, we're gonna be learning. Thank you guys very about, much. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be learning some stuff about our individual process while we talk with you guys, which is really really great. Um, yeah, it's such a cool dynamic. I also am. I'm in the. I'm an older brother and a younger brother. I'm right in the middle, so I feel like oh, it's wow. a fun dynamic to try to explore. Yeah, my brother. My brother's younger, but we're so close that we're basically twins. But we both have an older sister who's uh, who feels like an older sister. But um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I definitely know what that feeling is like. And I think they wrote it really, really wonderfully. I think they uh, counteract each other very well and continue to do so throughout the process of the show. And you guys have actually seen more than we have. <laughs> I think. I'm going to admit it. You guys are way <laughs> more. You've seen way more of the show than we have. This is bananas to hear you guys talk about it, too. I'm excited to see it. Well, thank you, guys. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next question is for Charlotte and Caitlin. Hi, this is Caitlin from Sky Talkers. So great to talk to you both today. Um, I can't believe we've seen more than you. It's so great. Uh, <laughs> but my question is, you're both not strangers to voice acting, but were there any challenges you faced when coming into the world of Lego Star Wars animation? Not doing the 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 lightsaber noises. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's damn near impossible. I get it. It's it's like it's hard. I Real remember hard. Um, them telling uh, me asking. I thought it would be funny because Sig is like a Star Wars fan in the realm of Star Wars. That I think that it would be very realistic for Sig to make the noises as he held the lightsaber. <laughs> I was like, can I do a few takes where I go whoa, 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 whoa. like? Can I please? And they're like, yeah, go for it. I don't know if it made the cut, but I really do hope it did. Because I, I really hope it made, it the made cut. it easier on me because like Sig is just a Star Wars fan in Star Wars. So I got to do the dumbest things in the world and just quote the movies and do the dumbest stuff ever. And it was rad. All right. Next question is for Keith and Kerwin. Hi, this is Keith and Kerwin of Father Sun Hi. Hey guys. Yeah. Oh. I loved your performances as Sig and Dev. Did you guys get to choose who would play who, or did the producers already have this in mind? Oh, I think we were passed well before. <laughs> that would be so crazy, though. I would love it if, if, <laughs> if we got to choose. That, that'd that be the dream. If getting that would be dope. Although, I'm not going to lie, I would love to see Gaten <laughs> as, as Darth Devastator. <laughs> he would, too. I don't know if like my voice compliments for a for a Sith Lord. I feel Dude, like I, I don't think mine does either. <laughs> right. We'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see when we watch the show for the Maybe first we'll time. just do like an alternate season. We'll go in and record and just switch parts and see what oh, that would be great. I did have I did have one um friend of mine who watched the trailer recently go, Wow, you talked about the whole thing. And I go, That's Gaten. It's not, <laughs> not me. What are you talking? So, Do you even know what I sound like? That's so. 
Dude, there's someone out there who thinks we could switch roles. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like there could be a lot of overlap. I think it could work. But no, to answer your question, unfortunately, we, we did not get to choose our parts, but they were bestowed upon us. <laughs> Which is nice of them. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Next question is for Brian. Hey, this is Brian with uh, Full of Sith. Um, I just want to say uh, it's great to see you all in in Lucasfilm work. Tony, you were terrific in Willow. Um, I want to ask, Lego Star Wars is a little bit on the silly side mm -hmm. of Star Wars, but uh, you both bring an earnestness to your parts. And I'm wondering how the both of you worked on balancing that earnestness with the silliness uh, in the room with your, with your voices, because it, it definitely comes through where it's, it's silly where it needs to be for the both of you, but also, you know, it brings emotion. There's actually moments where it's like, I, I mean, excuse the pun, like devastating. Very, I, great pun. Um, I think the most important balance, this is easy to get, I think a little bit more in voiceover and stuff. I think what makes things funny is when the people making the jokes don't know they're making jokes is when I think if people are too hyper aware of the fact that they're trying to be funny, it ends up just falling flat. So I think what makes um, this show specifically really goofy and silly and fun and relatable is that um, especially with Tony, especially with, uh, with um, Sig and everybody involved, like the character Sig and everybody involved uh, it's really high stakes for these characters. And even though, like, in context of, like, Star Wars fans, they can watch and be like, great, we're having fun watching Darth Jar Jar be on TV for the first time, which is insane as a concept. But um, it means that, like, these characters are consistently going through really scary stuff and, like, big tra like things that people can relate to, like getting older with your sibling and one of them, like, like, it has the vibe of, like, an older brother getting ready to, like, leave for college and, like, the younger one not really knowing how to, like, deal with that shift. And that's kind of what makes things more fun to watch is when you can relate to them personally as well as just observing a really goofy, fun time. Yeah. I think also the benefit of, of what we had was Dan and Benji's incredible um, writing. You know, mm. uh, it's not silly for silly sake, you know. I know I came in with a little bit less jokes than everyone else, and I was dying laughing reading the scripts. But knowing that, um, you know, uh, to these people, to these characters, this is their real life. This is what is happening no matter what, as fun and as silly as it is for us to see. You know, this is everything in their lives. So you want to give it as much passion and as much love mm -hmm. and attention as um, as certainly the writers did, but also potentially the characters who are living it um you know going through um and so i will say i had the i had the massive benefit of having these incredible lines that you know i could add the earnestness to thank you both thank you appreciate it brian all right next question is for dan Gentlemen, uh, pleasure to chat with you both. I think one of my favorite things about this whole dynamic of the story is that, as Brian alluded to, there's some fun elements, but this is actually a pretty serious story with a lot of gravitas. Not only is it about brothers and relationships, but it's about kind of destiny versus free will. And I was interested in knowing what you both thought about the themes inherent in this story. Ooh, that's a really good question. Yeah. Do you want to take that, Tony, first? Yeah, sure. Um, it's it's Lego Star Wars, but it's still Star Wars. And I think that's kind of the wheelhouse that it always kind of lays in, right? Um, from the prequels to the original trilogy to everything we've seen up till now. Um, these themes are always present and always there. And, and I think what, again, I'll keep mentioning them over and over again, but Dan and Benji have done wonderfully well is they've kind of aged with their audience as adults um, and bringing all of that with them without having to dumb it down or anything like that, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is really, really smart. And I, I absolutely love things that, and projects and stories that really kind of push the envelope of what, you know, kids can enjoy. Yeah, I agree. I think what's so cool about this is that Star Wars is a story that's like fully rooted in destiny. Like the entire crux of these nine movies is a prophecy, is a prophecy of like this is set in stone, this will happen. 
It's just a matter of like those things falling into place and letting them be so. But I think what's so great about this one is that it completely flips it on its head and that like that what everything we know about the world that we love and have grown to know all the lore about is completely flipped and, and shuffled and rearranged. And so that gives you an opportunity to kind of make a story that is kind of about free will in in a world that usually isn't. And I think that inherently is a more compelling thing. Like when you can have these characters that like, it truly is up to them how this is going to go. There is nothing set in stone. Um, it is, it raises stakes. It makes it more exciting to watch, especially in context of family and these two boys going in completely different directions for the duration of, of what we've seen so far. And uh, I think it just makes it, yeah, it makes it exciting. It makes it fun. Uh, also leaves room for just us to have, um, it leaves room for like Star Wars fans to just make a show for Star Wars fans. And like the fact that Lucasfilm was like, like on board with us, like poking fun at a bunch of like the Star Wars world and like referencing like the expanded universe and like, like Reddit forum stuff, like, from like way beyond out there. Like the fact that we've even gotten to do that at all, like it's just completely shifts us around. And so I think it's, it's certainly the most bizarre Star Wars project that I think has come out in a while. And that makes it really fun to be a part. Next question is for Gustavo. Hi guys, uh, Gustavo from Trial of the Force. Uh, before anything, I have to say thank you for taking the time uh, to chat with us and Tony, uh, so happy to have another Latino in Star Wars. It's great to welcome you into the family. It's uh, amazing to have more representation in the universe. Um, this question is for both of you. Um, your backgrounds have been like obviously getting with Stranger Things in a in a franchise that has to do with a lot of love for pop culture and love for lore, as you were yeah. talking about before. And then you, Tony, being part of like Spider-Man, more specifically with Lucasfilm with Willow. Like how did both of those experiences, uh, sharing part of those universes kind of prepared you or gave you any uh, insight into how to approach your characters here in Lego Star Wars? Hmm. I think I wasn't scared. Um... Unless you want to go first. No, I, I agree. I was just me like being excited by that answer. Yeah, it's, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I wasn't scared to, to jump on board. Um, and I feel like sometimes fear can push creativity or either stifle it the way you use it. But, you know, being a part of, as you said, both Willow and Spider Man and other things as well, you kind of just come into it having fun and, um, you know, there, there's nothing to lose here, um, which is which is really, really an interesting place to be, because um, I do remember, you know, being scared joining the MCU and, and you know, reviving Willow with Lucas. So so it was really, really just getting to have fun and, and do this for the love of it. And and now that it's out or, well, not out, but you know, you guys have seen it and everything and people are starting to love it and, and everything. It just makes me happy because I had one of the best times working on this project. Um, and so I think beyond that, I'm just enjoying every moment of it. Right. You know, um, whether it be people having fun with the Lego aspect of things uh, or um, or the... Darth Jar Jar or whatever it might be. I'm just, I'm, I'm getting to enjoy it with people. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing I took from the other projects and was able to kind of bring here and, you know, I will say it helps. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think like there's always, when it comes to franchise work, there's always going to be a level of pressure around it because the whole point of franchise work is that it's loved by so many people. And Tony, you've already worked on like so much stuff that has all that pressure attached to it. And um, all the stuff you've done with it has always been very, very successful and very good, uh, which is like really cool to see. And like, that's awesome because it's, it's hard to do in the context of the franchise. So anytime you're touching something that is as loved as Star Wars is by myself included, um, it, there's always a level of pressure there. But the minute you read a script like this and the minute you work in a room that you do with, with Chris and Benji, you understand that like the stakes here in context of this are so low because it's just fun. We're just here to like 
it's the first Star Wars, like, and that's the thing is that, like, like historically, recently, like, like Star Wars fans are really hard to please, and like myself included. Like a lot of times, people they hold these stories really close to their heart, and so when you have something that's just fresh and loose and low stakes and just made by people who want to goof around for people who want to goof around in context of these stories, it takes so much pressure off. So it's just the love and to see it all come together is like really, really great. I think it's exactly what specifically this franchise needs right now is to just like take the pressure of things like, and I think it's so fun that it like makes a spin on, on a multiverse concept, which has been used quite a lot and has been frustrating to some people and has been like, a lot of times used as like for like plot convenience where you can take something that is really hard to manage and just go fully down the rabbit hole with it and poke fun at it and like find new explorative ways to like create with it is really fun. Thanks guys. Thank you. Cool. Next question is for Victor. I want to get, thank you very much for your time today. I'm Vic Aragon from uh, Fan Dads. Uh, my question for you two is, I mean, the series, we see a lot of alternate versions of characters and vehicles because uh, it is called Rebuild the Galaxy. Yeah. So if you two had your choice of picking any vehicle from the Star Wars galaxy to remix and rebuild yourselves, mm -hmm. what vehicle would you two pick? This is a good, good question. Oh, vehicle. Um, I think I have a good idea of what I might want to do. Yeah. So like, of course... A part of me wants to like fly the Millennium Falcon, but there's no, it's not practical in the sense, like for some reason I'm thinking about my life here on earth. What would be the most practical vehicle in Star Wars history to have? And I think it would be um, one of the Jedi shuttles, like the tiny, like single cockpit, single flight, like little ships that the Jedi use and fly around the galaxy. And like the ones that um, Obi-Wan and Anakin use, in um, the Battle of Coruscant in the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. One of those, because like they're super zippy and super fun, and you can find easy parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's mine. I I think I would have gone like a speeder. Yeah. Just, I think I'm going like real fast. And also, like, you know, it floats, so I can go over the water, which I think yeah, would be that's really, good. really cool. That's better. Um, but you know what? For for the idea of like, you, I don't want to copy your answer, but now I want a spaceship. <laughs> I'm saying I've thought about this. It's you. You it's have convenient. Now I'm like, you know, L.A. traffic is crap, so <laughs> I want to. <laughs> yeah. Out. But if I could fly, there's no traffic. You're just right out. over it. Oh, yeah. I'm 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 sticking with the speeder, but good. just know in my heart, I want to steal this vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right, guys, that's all the time that we have for this roundtable interview. Please say your goodbyes and then exit the Zoom. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a great Thank day. you so much. Bye-bye.